Welcome to this video on the PDF Connector. You can download the PDFs to follow along in your own copy of Tableau. PDFs can contain valuable data for analysis in Tableau. The PDF Connector in Tableau is designed to help pull out data in tables. Because PDFs lack metadata about the data, there may be some post-connection work to be done by you before analysis. Tableau can read crosstab data tables from PDFs that ideally look something like this, with columns and rows and a single line of data for each row. Here, the stock data starts on page 2. Let's connect with Tableau. When we select the PDF file from the connection pane, a page picker appears. We can scan the whole document, a specific page, or a range of pages. We'll look at 2 through 8. And we'll bring the first page to the canvas. One of the lines from the PDF table header is confusing Tableau, but if we turn on the data interpreter, we get our headers as expected. Each page came in as a separate table, but since they're structured in the same way with the same column headings, it's easy to bring them back together with a union. With the first table already on the canvas, we'll drag out any other desired pages tables to the union drop area underneath the first. We get a new column for table name, and if we scroll down, we can see that the union data from page 3 is aligning perfectly with page 2. This PDF was structured really nicely for import, but not all PDFs will be. As a general rule, Tableau will connect best to PDFs with a tabular structure like this, with a single row of data per line, no hierarchies or nested headers, and no subtables. But PDFs don't have to be perfect to work. We'll connect to another file, one that's not as easy as the first. The table we want is here on page 14. As a note, Tableau looks at absolute page numbers, which may or may not correspond to the pagination in the document. We'll add another data source. And we'll choose page 14. The Rescan PDF option under the Data Connection dropdown lets us re-pick which pages to look at. There was only one table on that page, but there are three options here to the left. Tableau detected three possible ways to pull in that table. If we bring out each one at a time, we can see what they contain. As a note, when unioning tables across pages like we did before, if there are multiple versions from each page, be sure to union the correct table version, not multiple versions of the same page. We'll bring out Table 1 and use the data interpreter. It looks like Table 1 has all of our information, but for some reason, 1995 through 1997 is being read as a single column. If we wanted to use this version of the data, we could clean this up by doing a custom split and splitting all columns on spaces, and then rename the split fields to the appropriate years. But let's see what tables 2 and 3 give us. Table 2 looks like the bottom of the original table. And Table 3 looks like the top. I like the column delineation better with Tables 2 and 3, so let's work with those. First, we'll union them, dragging Table 2 out to under Table 3. There's a mismatch between Inflows and Column F1. If we select both of them and choose Merge Mismatched Fields, We now have the column as we expected. Let's rename this Water Sources. There are several rows of nulls, either because of a subheader, like Change in Storage, was read as a data row, or because a single row, like Abstraction for Hydroelectricity, was read as two different rows. To get rid of these nulls, we'll add a data source filter up in the right corner. Click Add and we'll add a filter. We 
we could choose any of these columns that have nulls. I'll use F10 and click OK. Next, select Null and then Exclude. Then click OK and OK again. Now those rows are gone and we're left with just our data. But I'll undo that because we also see that there are several types of water sources that are actually totals. We want to filter those out and the nulls all at once. We'll go to Filter and Add, and we'll select Water Sources. We'll check anything that's a header or a total from the original PDF or that corresponds to a null row for the values. Hydroelectricity appears twice, once with data and once with nulls, so I'll leave it for now so as not to remove data. Then we'll click Exclude and OK. Now we have the rows with data and one row of nulls for hydroelectric, but we can clean that up in a moment. We don't have headers except for this first column, but we can cross-reference the values with the original PDF and see what should be what. The columns should just be the years 1995 to 2010. I'll speed this up. We can now pivot our data So we have a column for year and a column for million cubic meters. We'll hide the table name column and change the data type for year to be a date. We'll change the data type for million cubic meters to whole numbers. And now that this is in the final column format, we can filter any nulls from this column here. We'll go to Edit Filters. Add, select million cubic meters, and exclude nulls. There are still some issues with the water source names themselves. We'll bring up the menu for this field and click Aliases. Here, we can re-alias members of a given field. We'll double-click the alias and type what it should be. Finally, I remember that there was some structure to the original PDF table. There were categories of water sources. We can build this structure in the data pane, so let's click to Sheet 1. First off, million cubic meters is actually a measure, so we'll drag it down here. We can then recreate our groups. We'll bring water sources to rows, and we'll make the first group. Control-click on the members that should be part of the same group. We'll use the paperclip icon in the tooltip to do the grouping. Repeat and group again. Let's right-click on this new field in the data pane and edit the group. First, we'll click Precipitation and group that, even though it's by itself, to make it its own group. And now we can rename them. And we'll name this overall grouped field Categories. If we drag the original water sources on top of this category field, we can create a hierarchy, enabling Drill Down in the view. The precise steps to clean up a given PDF post-connection can vary, but hopefully this video shows you some tools you can use to clean up the data so it's ready for analysis. As a reminder, Tableau will have trouble with PDFs containing subtables, hierarchies and headers, multiple rows of content that should be interpreted as a single row of data, and finally, Note that colors and shading can change how data is interpreted because of how PDFs must be parsed into cells and tables of data. Thank you for watching this PDF Connector training video. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau.